Hello everyone, this Icons here, and today we're going to go together through 10 things most people probably haven't got a clue about the post-it notes. But first things first though. The post-it is a small piece of paper of which its low-tech adhesive band allows you to temporarily attach it to pretty much everything you can think of, from documents to computer monitors and ultimately walls. Despite its omnipresence on most of our homes, desks and office spaces, this little piece of canary yellow sticky paper had far from certain origins. One could say that the success of the post-it note arose from a good technology paired with the right user need that got sold at the right time via a very effective marketing strategy. Although, this statement can be a little bit misleading, since its journey was packed with challenges and hiccups along the way. Number 1. A team effort. It took a decade for a team within 3M, the Minnesota mining and manufacturing company, to come up with such a successful product. The post-it low-tech adhesive was invented in 1968 by Dr. Spencer Silver, although it took six years for its application to be envisioned by another fellow 3M scientist, Art Fry. At this point, 3M management had no faith in the product whatsoever and the project got canned until 1978 when Jeff Nicholson, the 3M new products laboratory manager, was able to push the post-it into the market using the right marketing strategy. Number 2. The Fruitful Mistake Entrusted to come up with bigger, stronger and tougher adhesives for the aircraft construction industry, Spencer Silver stumbled across an option that was far too distant from his initial briefing. He found a somewhat peculiar, low-tech, pressure-sensitive adhesive that was able to stick lightly to surfaces without bonding tightly to them, which meant that the sticky substance could easily be peeled away from a surface without leaving any residue behind, thus allowing it to be reused. Number 3. Post-its Functioning Method This low-tech pressure-sensitive adhesive, also known as acrylate copolymer microspheres, is, as its name suggests, actually made of microscopic spheres which are only pretty good at sticking well to surfaces they are tangent to. It is in this tangential relationship between the microspheres and the surface to which they will be bonded to that lies the secret of the post-it. The lack of contact area allows for the microspheres to stick to pretty much anything, as well as still allowing them to be easily peeled away. These microspheres are known to be notoriously strong and resist breaking, dissolving or melting, giving post-it users the ability to reuse them over and over again. Number 4. Silver's Perseverance One could say that Silver's perseverance was the reason why his invention eventually got featured into a marketable product. Silver was well known within 3M for constantly pushing the low-tech adhesive to his peers, however it took six years for someone to come up with a functional application for it. The person who did so was Art Fry. This 3M product development engineer suggested sticking Silver's low-tech adhesive to a piece of paper so that they could stick it to pretty much anything. Number 5. Forcing the adhesive to stay on the paper. Fry's idea arose from a challenge with which he was faced every Wednesday night, when the little scraps of paper he used to bookmark his hymnal kept falling before Sunday's service. Although, getting the adhesive to permanently bond with the yellow canary paper was a task which has proven to be easier said than done. Post-it early prototypes kept leaving parts of their adhesive stuck to the surface they have been adhered to, and to deal with this issue, two other 3M employees entered the scene. Roger Merrill and Henry Courtney were the men responsible to come up with the coating which applied to the paper helped Silver's low-tech adhesive to permanently bond onto it. We're halfway through our list, but let me take this chance to ask you, if you're enjoying our content, please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel. Make sure to turn that notification bell on and let us know in the comment section down below what you would like to see featured in future videos. Now, let's get back to it. Number 6. Why yellow? A lot has been speculated about the post-its iconic yellow canary color. Some have said that this was a way to make them stand out when stuck to the widely used white paper. Others saw it as a way to create an emotional connection with their users. Although, no one could be far more off from the truth. Jeff Nicholson has confirmed that the post-it color was, as pretty much everything on its development path, a rather fortunate coincidence. 
The lab where the 3M Posty team was working on was right next to another one which produced a lot of yellow scrap paper, making this an easily available and accessible resource for them to work on. Number 7. First trial. Once all the wrinkles have been ironed out, Fry decided to make 3M corporate headquarters as the Post-its proving ground. To do that, he supplied the entire company with this new revolutionary piece of canary yellow paper which could easily be pinned to pretty much anything. They were an instant success. Everyone started using them around the office to pass on written messages, and that's when Fry realized that they were not just a simple bookmark. Instead, they've just created a complete revolutionary way of communicating, even though 3M management still didn't think that the post-it would be a commercial success, which led them to shelve the project for another three years. Number 8. A failed first marketing approach. Finally, in 1977, 3M started a straight-to-consumer test sales run in four cities, delivering what they back then entitled as the press and pill product. This marketing strategy proved not to be very effective since almost none of them ended up buying the product again. This only came to confirm 3M executives' preconceptions that at the time the so-called press and peel wasn't a commercially viable product. Number 9. The second time was the charm. Although the 1977 press and peel flop was not enough to discourage Nicholson. A year later, in 1978, in what ended up being known as the Boys Blitz, 3M marketeers decided to send out large numbers of free post-it samples straight to companies. With this repurposed marketing approach, almost 90% of the companies reordered additional units, thereby proving 3M management wrong and showing them that there was an actual demand for this type of product. Number 10. The Icon Status Ultimately, post-it notes ended up achieving the design iconic status they have today by means of self-promotion. The fact that their users kept sending notes and documents back and forth, with these little pieces of canary yellow sticky paper stuck onto them, raised their recipients' curiosity and propelled the post-it into one of the most ubiquitous items in today's office spaces. From the team effort to its iconic status, going through the highs and lows throughout their creation, these were 10 facts about the post-it that you were probably not aware of. If you've enjoyed today's videos, please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel. Make sure to turn that notification bell on and let us know in the comments section down below which products you would like to see featured in the future. Thank you and we'll see you on the next one.